heart just pounding? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please another round of applause for Caleb Hans Palaszczuk. And some more for my friend Jim James on piano. Thank you. All right, this is a great story that you and I get to share. So, let's talk about how this violin ended up in your hands. This violin actually ended up in my hands because you gave me a call. <laughs> now, you had uh, gotten my name from a number of different people and asked me if I knew of the Recycled Orchestra. I'm thrilled to say that yes, I did. And then you asked me if I would be willing to share the story of this instrument and this organization, and I said, yes, I would love to. Yeah. So, sometimes you wonder how we get speakers and how we get ideas. This came from a team member. Team member emailed me and said, you must see this. And immediately, my heart was touched. How it is that a group of people who have been marginalized live in environments that nobody aspires to, that we all work very hard to change. And I was so touched by that. And at, the, at that point in time, I had been in contact with um, the Sustainability Services Group at Waste Management. We're working very hard to figure out how we make our event more sustainable. And when I saw this, I sent it over to their leadership team with that same title, you must see this. And within 30 minutes, their executive team emailed me back and they said, how do we engage? And that started this wonderful journey that Caleb and I have been on, reaching out to the makers of the documentary, that Land Philharmonic, that had been telling this story, uh, Rodolfo and Juliana. And from that, we also then met with Daniel Piper, who is the music curator for the Musical Instrument Museum that's located in Arizona. And he, and indeed, had been working with the Land Philharmonic for the past year, understanding how we can bring more of these instruments to the rest of the world so that we have this story, we understand how it is that in a society where we have so much that we are throwing away our music, and in a society that has so few things, far less of the resources, and yet mm -hmm. they're making an absolute adamant effort to make sure that their community has music going with the resources that they have available to them, which is far less than we have in this country, and yet they're still able to make instruments and make music something that I find incredibly vital to everyday life. Yes. And um, so when I gave you the instrument, I want you to share with everybody what it is your experience, the technical quality. Well, as it's a metal box, it has its own timbre. I'm used to a wooden instrument. Yeah. As you can see, it, it has <laughs> scrap wood for the majority of the other pieces. The only actual violin properly equipment would be the strings, the bridge, and these tuning pegs. Even the tailpiece is a fork. fork. <laughs> so they've gone with what they have available, as you saw in the video and as I hold in my hands, is, you know, scraps that may have no value to some people, but clearly is valuable to others. So, well, thank you so much for coming up and sharing this beautiful story. We're so grateful to those folks in Paraguay who have demonstrated to us the value that we can find in the things that are around us and the things that we throw away, that there are value in them. So again, Caleb, thank you. My pleasure. Oh, and, and we should note, honestly, this is how the violin was sent to us. <laughs> so, if you will put it in its protective case and take really good care of it. Absolutely. <laughs>